By the way, dude, I, I think most white people don't know that we say Sham for Syria. Did you know that? We don't, all, we don't always say Syria, we say Sham. But it, you know, you could also mean Damascus with that. <laughs> you you got to be a Shami to understand, okay? So are you guys ready for more war crimes? Hmm? Are, you, are you ready for some like real bullshit? So as we've covered before, the United States... They still have troops inside Syria. They're guarding the oil fields. Yeah, who could have seen that coming? So, they're guarding the oil fields in Deir Zor, And now, they've taken to burning crops. Because why not? All right, so, take a look at the article. The United States is using wheat as a weapon of war in Syria. Apache helicopters of the U.S. occupation forces flew low Sunday morning, according to residents of the Adla village in the Shadadi countryside south of Hasake, as they dropped thermal balloons, an incendiary weapon causing the wheat fields to explode into flames, while the hot dry winds fanned the raging fire. After delivering their fiery payload, the helicopters flew close to homes in an aggressive manner, which caused residents and especially small children to fear for their lives. The military maneuver was delivering a clear message. Don't sell your wheat to the Syrian government. Head of Hasake Agricultural Directorate Rajab Salami said in a statement to Sana that several fires have broken out in agricultural fields in Taltamar countryside as well. Alright. By the way, you know what that reminds me of? This, they f The helicopters flew close to homes in an aggressive manner. So if any of you know your World War II planes, the Germans, they had one called the Stuka. The Stuka, it had a little propeller on the wing. And the only purpose of it was to create a, a shrieking noise because it was a, a nosedive bomber. Okay, And uh, it was just made to terrify civilians. How nice. So... Bread. Bread is the most important staple in Syria. And two weeks into the annual wheat harvest, Damascus is keen on securing its supply of grain while beset by the global pandemic. On May 4th, President Bashar al-Assad said in a meeting with his COVID-19 team that our most difficult internal challenge is securing basic goods, especially foodstuffs. Okay. So, are, are, we, are we clear up till this point, Syria, okay, has been at war for nine years. Usually in war, you know, you, you don't have a lot of food, do you? And so the uh, imperialists, the Americans, in order to screw over the Syrian government and uh, the Syrian people, the civilian population, decided to just burn 200 acres of wheat. Democracy, right? Freedom. So, since the beginning of the U.S.-NATO attack on Syria in 2011, wheat production has fallen from an average of 4.1 million tons per year to just 2.2 million tons in 2019. So almost by half. Syria has had, Syria had been a wheat importer but switched to being an exporter of grain in the 1990s. Indeed. According to the UN, Syria was hit by acute food insecurity in 2019 with approximately 6.5 million people considered food insecure. The northern provinces of Hasake, Raqqa, Halab, and Deir Zor, in addition to Hama in central Syria, accounting for 96% of total national wheat production. Using fire as a weapon of war, 85,000 hectares of grain were burnt in 2019, and the Syrian government was forced to import 2.7 million tons to cover the losses. Destroying the Syrian agriculture has been a war strategy used by various enemies of Syria and has resulted in mass migration of residents in the villages to Germany by way of Greece, by the smuggler boats in Turkey. So, did you digest the sentence that I just wrote to you? There are a lot of people, racist and not racist, I don't care, 
who complain about refugees. They're like, oh, why, why are all these brown people coming? Like, why, why are the, the, the Muslims is, is coming here? The, the Syrians, why are they all coming here? Here's a clue, man. Maybe it has something to do with the fucking wars that you started in Syria. Just saying. Just saying. Maybe if you stop destroying their fucking farms and their livelihoods and their country and their infrastructure, they wouldn't be coming to your country, would they? Huh? Crazy, right? Absolutely crazy. The Syrian breadbasket. Just like I told you, the northeastern region is now controlled by the Kurdish-dominated Autonomous Administration of North and East Syria. Have you ever heard of that? I've never even heard of that in my fucking life. What is this autonomous region? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude. Do you see the problem here, though, with, with the idea of a Kurdish autonomous region? Coincidentally, conveniently, that's where all the fucking oil is, and that's where all the fucking wheat is. I don't think that's that's a really good deal, is it? Not a really good deal. Now, for the moment, for the time being, they actually have a, they actually have a deal with each other. Because since the Americans screw the Kurds over, just like they screw over anyone, uh, you know, that they've finished with, just dump them. Now. To have protection from the Turks, from the Turkish army, they've uh, struck a deal with the Syrian government. I don't know, what, when was this, October? It was like something like six months ago. What a fucking salad. Can you look at this? Oh, God. What a fucking salad. The armed wing of the AA is the Syrian Democratic Forces, right? The SDF. Led by the Kurdish YPG militia, who partnered... With the U.S. occupation forces in the fight against ISIS, which ended in 2017, right? Even though Trump allowed President Erdogan of Turkey to invade Syria, oh, so so Trump Trump now is uh, controlling the Syrian border. Oh, that's news to me. Trump allowed he allowed him. He's like, yeah, go go ahead. I have, I have a spare key. Allah lai wa fakia kel. The U.S. military is still working in support of the SDF and AA on many levels. The Kurds and their U.S. ally hold the wheat as a trump card in ongoing negotiations. Do you understand what's going on here? We're not done. We're not done. Al-Assad needs access to cereal crops in northeast Syria to prevent a bread crisis in the areas of western Syria that he controls. Yes. Wheat is a weapon of great power in this next phase of the Syrian conflict. And he added that the Kurds and their U.S. ally have a significant stockpile of this wheat weapon. It can be used to apply pressure on the Syrian government and on Russia to force concessions in the U.N.-led diplomatic process so do you understand what's going on now the united states with their conventional army control the oil fields right in derzor and now they're helping the kurds uh take control of the wheat production in syria they're smart little cookies aren't they hmm. so this way, they can force um, Al-Assad into a corner. I don't know. Maybe Russia will just keep giving him <laughs> wheat and everything will be fine and dandy in his regard. But I, I just think that's fucked up. Like, motherfucker, it's wheat. Like, people are hungry. Why would you use that as a fucking bargaining tool? For what? For what? Like, let, let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. If I'm in my country and I see a foreign army invading my country and you're working with them, then fuck you. What is wrong with you? They're fucking, they're trying to kill us, motherfucker. Hello? What are you doing? That's one thing. 
the other thing i think i've told you guys this fun fact before i love repeating it because i think it's interesting oil okay accounts for 25 percent government's revenue right so 25 percent of the syrian government's revenue is from oil and they can't use it because the, the americans are on top of it and by the way i don't know if they're actually uh, you know uh, selling it off but definitely definitely daesh uh, isis were selling it off to turkey right nato yes your your nato ally was buying oil off of terrorists stolen oil by the way yeah because rem remember there's no such thing as poor terrorists okay remember that so the kurds are a minority in syria and even in the northeastern region they are a minority despite being quote unquote in control the non-kurdish population is a mix of syrian arabs syrian christians syrian and armenians and many of them have suffered under the kurdish administration which saw non-kurds being ethnically cleansed as they lost homes shops and farms at the hands of the sdf yes this is the truth me personally i'm not too interested in you know handing off the fucking oil fields and the bread basket and uh, you know all of the wheat uh to people who would chop my head off okay me being a syrian christian So that, that's just my take. Okay, that's just my take. If, if you don't mind. Now, uh, my question, which I want to ask you, is does this seem like a civil war to you? All of this shit, so many actors involved. Does this seem like a genuine revolution? This seems like a really shitty coup. Okay, I mean, they've been trying for nine years to get rid of this guy, and it's just not working. They tried with, with the jihadists, right? The 50 fucking plus groups, whose names I can't remember. What do they got now? THS, HTS, Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, who else you got? Jabhat al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda in Iraq. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't care about these motherfuckers. It's all the same bullshit. But that failed. That strategy didn't work, right? They couldn't do it. They got very close, though, remember. So now they're like, well, look, um, we already had sanctions. Let's try new sanctions. And uh, let's just fuck their shit up. Let's take all the wheat hostage. Let's burn down their fields. Let's sit on top of their oil. And let's see how long the civilian population is going to tolerate this before they rise up against the government. Now, here's what they don't understand. Uh, most Syrians have their fucking brain switched on. They know what's going on. They see this game. So no matter how fucking long you try to put economic sanctions on the Syrians, which is essentially economic, economic terrorism, it's not going to make a fucking difference. Because they would rather have this government than your imperialist shit. Do you understand? Yes, that is the reality. Where's the proof? You've been trying for nine fucking years. I'm seeing a result. I just see my country destroyed. I see uh, my fellow countrymen dead. And uh, you still being cunts. No one invited you. Get your fucking ass out. What, like, like what, is, what is this concept that you have fucking Americans walking through the fucking, uh, uh, you know, walking through Hasake and Qamishli and burning fucking wheat? Motherfucker, what are you doing there? Can you imagine, can you imagine the fucking outcry if a Syrian dude just went to like, where, where, where the fuck do you grow your crops in the Midwest? Can you imagine that? If a Syrian dude went to the US and just started fucking burning crops? Donald Trump would be launching nukes. Again, the fucking double standard. I'm sick of this shit, man. Fuck off. You think because we're, because we're brown, you can just walk all over us, huh? Because we're good people? Hmm? They just come in and bomb whatever they like, like, you know, it's their backyard. Same, same with the fucking Zionists. You know, they just conduct airstrikes one week. You know, two, three, four airstrikes a week. Hey, asshole. Uh, people live here? Can you, like, fuck off? Could you imagine if a Syrian jet, like, violated uh, Israeli airspace? Oh my god, you'd never hear the end of it. Never. But, but it's okay when they do it, of course. And, and don't you criticize, because if you do, you're anti-Semitic. Seriously, though, I was thinking about that earlier. Like, about how they, they co-opted the fucking ethnicity of Arabs. Like, 
You're not going to come here and tell me that I'm not Semitic. You're not going to come here and tell me that Palestinians are, are not Semitic. What is this? Why are, you, why are you trying to strip them of their fucking identity? You won't let them have a state. or You won't let them have a nation. You won't let them have a culture. You won't even let them have fucking houses. You put them in like these concrete huts. You won't even let them have their fucking ethnicity. Fuck off, man. What is this? What is this? Yeah, of course it's a war crime. It is. You, you, listen, man. You know what Stalin did, right? Starving off Ukrainians, millions of Ukrainians. It's a war crime. You, you, you I, I can't believe I have to, I have to like, what, how is it that there are people who don't understand like the parallel here? That, that they, they don't understand like, oh shit, that's true. It's a war crime. When you go in, right, and you destroy a food supply for a civilian population, that is a fucking war crime. I don't care who did it. I don't care why they did it. It's a war crime. And, of course, no one is ever going to get into trouble because, you know, the Americans do what they like. Look at this picture and tell, and tell me that this doesn't make you cry. Man, what, what, what the fuck did this guy do? Can somebody explain that to me? What did he do? That doesn't make you cry. F f fucking Syrian farmer, man. Allah. I mean, I'm guessing. So somebody, I mean, somebody's got to be farming over there. That's their fields. That's their work. That's their labor. And that's been set on fire by some fucking Apache. Fuck you. Seriously, fuck you. I mean, th th this is unbelievable. Like, they just don't even see us as human beings. I'm serious. I don't think that, like, the motherfucker flying that Apache could do that to like someone from his family, right? Or someone from his, uh, his country. Because he'd be like, oh, that, no, that's a fellow human. I can't do that. But then they see Syrians, they see brown people, and they're like, oh, yeah, fuck you, man. Let's do it. This is a sickness. This is indoctrination. It's brainwashing. Again, what, as usual, oh, we just had to do it. I'm sorry, but we had to do it. No, you don't have to do shit. Okay, I don't care if you're burning down uh, uh, wheat or you're fucking sunbathing. Get the fuck out of my country, right? D don't you see how funny it is the Republicans all the fucking time whining about immigration, but oh, the illegals are coming in. Oh, they're coming. Motherfucker. How many countries have you invaded illegally? John McCain came to Syria illegally. Who invited your fucking ass? Hmm? No one invited your fucking ass. And he's hanging out with, with terrorists. Tell the